In October 2022, the International Monetary Fund warned in its World Economic Outlook that the worst is yet to come and that for many people, 2023 will feel like a recession. The World Bank's latest Global Economic Prospects report predicts that global growth will slow to 1.7% from the 3% expected six months ago. And we can see the effects of what last year brought to the world and the continent with what South Africa has been going through. Many, like Africa's most industrialized economy, which struggled through last year through the global headwinds of the Russia-Ukraine war, record high inflation, rising interest rates, China's slowdown, and volatile energy prices, which were bound to take their toll, and take their toll they have. From COVID-19 onward, South Africa has battled high unemployment, inflation, rising debt, and a rising budget deficit. In addition, political instability and ongoing structural issues such as inequality and poor infrastructure continue to present challenges for the country's 2023 economic outlook. But there are some reasons for optimism. The outlook for South Africa in 2023 is complex and multifaceted, influenced by a combination of domestic and international factors. And to look into the crystal ball with me, to see what lies ahead for South Africa in 2023 is Christy Felgin, economist and senior manager with PwC South Africa. Christy, welcome to Business Edge once again. It's good to see you on this side of the new year. So first time I'm seeing you, Happy New Year, and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you as well. So let's start with this. We know that the challenges that 2022 brought to the whole world and the continent, but for many African economies, the long shadow of COVID-19 continued to stretch all the way into 2022 and for some of us even possibly into 2023 as well so in terms of that just how far reaching have the consequences of the COVID pandemic been for south africa and will they reach into 2023 well for many COVID 19 is a forgotten tale uh we have been walking around without masks we have everything's back to normal lockdown is gone uh, so those restrictions are gone but the, the economic effects are still with us uh, we've seen an increase in our unemployment rate. It was already amongst the highest in the world. It went even higher due to COVID. We got some of our jobs back, but South Africa's employment is still below where it was before the pandemic. And for a country with lots of challenges with inequality and poverty, the solutions would be creating jobs. So we've always had a slow pace of job creation. It's always been too slow. And now we've had the setback as well. So that's the biggest challenge, I think, that's left over from COVID-19 mm. amongst all the other things that we have to deal with this year as well. It's that legacy of lost jobs that we still need to get back. Okay, so there's a lot of pressure on South Africa for the country, for the region, and surprisingly many would be uh, surprised to hear also for the continent as well. A lot of eyes are on Nigeria, Egypt, and South Africa to be the ones that lift the continent economy in 2023. But we're hearing about... Nigeria and Egypt and South Africa remaining in a slow growth mode amid the challenges that are both external and, of course, internal. So do you foresee that slow growth mode actually happening for South Africa? Yes, when we look ahead at the, the prospects for a new year and we think about Africa, there's always this temptation to say, well, what will the big economies do? How will they lead us in terms of growth? Uh, we want to boost intra-Africa trade, so that means the smaller African countries, they need to trade more with the big African countries. So there's actually, there's lots of pressure on, on South Africa, Nigeria, Egypt, maybe even Kenya to perform well. But in the case of South Africa, I'd say the economic growth outlook is not fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. We had, before COVID, a very low economic growth rate, and actually for quite a few years, economic growth was below population growth. So that GDP per capita number was actually declining. And there's a, a long list of structural challenges. The top one is probably our electricity situation, yeah. uh, where we are seeing increasing and regular, very frequent power cuts. Uh, my electricity will go off shortly after this interview is done because we're sharing uh, availability at this stage. Mm. And that's probably our biggest challenge, just the ability to keep lights on, to keep businesses open, to keep factories going, to keep mines going. Um, the big challenge is obviously for small businesses that can't afford alternative energy sources. So our biggest challenge in 2023, and, and probably beyond that as well, is the reliability and the cost of electricity for South African business and households. So let me stay with ESCOM. Uh, we heard yesterday, of course, that right now, until further notice, uh, ESCOM is going to unfortunately uh, suffer South Africans with the worst blackouts ever. But in terms of, if you were to put this on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you think 
uh, ESCOM's issues will have a bearing on South Africa's economy in 2023, with 10 being literally the worst catastrophic disaster possible? Well, the challenge with that scale is that uh, over the past five years, every year we've seen more and more load shedding. And then the question is for 2023, will it improve? And to be honest, we are not seeing any signals that saying it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, for example, I will be having about 10 hours of electricity outages, not cumulatively, but over the spread of the day. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to operate a business like that, it's, it's very, very challenging. So the challenge of load shedding on a scale of one to 10, probably up there with seven, eight or nine, because it is not only impacting the productive economy, it's impacting consumer spending, it's impacting business confidence, which then impacts uh, investment decisions, it, uh, local and foreign investment. We as a country need lots of foreign investment to come into the into our economy to create the jobs that we need. And foreign investors are very obviously hesitant yes. because of the situation. So for us, the electricity situation is probably the biggest problem and the second and the third largest biggest problem that we have to deal with. Taking all top three positions. So, Christy, there are those who believe that South Africa could actually enter a technical recession. And some who feel South Africa and much of the continent has been in a recession in all but name. And depending on who you ask, South Africa's GDP growth rates could be anywhere from around 1.5 to just under 2% in 2023. So what is PwC predicting in terms of where that number could fall? And do you think that we could end up seeing two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP growth in 2023 for South Africa? Yes, so at the moment, the range of forecasts, are, it's quite wide, and you'll definitely get some numbers lower than 1.5%, close to 1%, actually. Uh, our forecast is for 1.6% growth this year. We do not foresee a technical recession. Now, when we talk about a recession, there's two parts. One is this, this technical nature of two quarters of negative impact on GDP. But on the other side, for most people, a recession is just the way that they experience the economy. So at the moment, people are seeing higher cost of living, high inflation, rising interest rates, challenges with finding jobs, and then the electricity situation is just making everybody miserable. So most people, without thinking about a, a technical definition for a recession, they'd say their life and their lifestyle is in recession. It's harder to get a job. Wages are not keeping pace with inflation. Cost of living is going up significantly. So yes, uh, it's, it is concern that this slowdown in economic growth is a problem. Uh, like I say, we don't foresee a technical recession, uh, but every day all over the world at this stage, there's all kinds of debate about mm. this, this question about a global recession. The bottom line is that 2023, the economic situation will be very challenging. Uh, it's likely that inflation will be less severe, but it's also likely that economic growth will be less. So there's no way of saying this year would be better or worse than last year because the challenges are just, you know, really compounds when you, when you add it all up. That's very true. But let's note this as well. It was not all bad news in 2022 for South Africa. The country did reap from a commodities boom that we witnessed last year. Unfortunately, Nigeria was unable to take advantage of that. But is that commodities boom and the continuation of it even less than it was last year, but still a continuation of that boom, is that something that you think South Africa should be able to still take advantage of, at least into Q1, Q2 of 2023? The commodities boom has actually been one of our economic recovery drivers from 2020. So it's, it's helped our economy get out of the COVID slump. Uh, it is something that is really beneficial for us when commodity prices are high and in certain times our exchange rate is weak. So lots of money being earned from exports. Uh, we are a small open economy, so we are dependent on export and imports in a, in a global perspective. I think there's still a bit of momentum in this commodity price situation. Uh, we've seen again some weakness in our exchange rate. We're seeing with ongoing global disruption in the supply of energy and food products, there are still quite a lot of prices that are high. So, yes, still some good news, but we have to keep in mind commodity cycles are not permanent. Mm. Uh, and that's something that our government has emphasized a few times. Every time they do a, a forecast for the fiscal situation, they say we expect some more benefit from the commodity side, but it's not going to last forever. So we cannot keep our hopes on this commodity cycle driving our economy for another two, three years. Yeah. We need all kinds of changes and reforms to actually get that going.
A lot of volatility there. So let's also talk about the Reserve Bank as well. We've seen, some have said that central banks around the world just seem to go in a herd mentality. They all follow what the U.S. Federal Reserve is doing. Um, and we've seen the U.S. Federal Reserve maintain its hawkish stance on interest rates, which is likely to continue, but at a slower pace. But for at least Q1 of 2023, as far as our crystal ball can see, do you see the South African Reserve Bank also maintaining its pace and its path as well? Yes, so we expect the Reserve Bank to continue lifting interest rates this month and probably in March as well, which is its, its second meeting for the year. Uh, and, and the, the exact nature of that will probably be maybe 50 or 75 basis points in total. Our Reserve Bank has made it quite clear at its most recent meeting in November that inflation is still a big concern. There's still upside risk. And in terms of getting inflation back into the target range, they don't expect it to happen this year, probably only in 2024. So the Reserve Bank governor has been quite clear that the end of the hiking cycle has not arrived yet. Uh, but on a, on a positive note, if we look at the way that inflation forecasts are trending lower from, from early this year, mm -hmm. where they will be going in 2024, we see a little bit of room for interest rates to maybe start declining again towards the end of 2023. Because at some stage they need to peak, they need to stop going up as inflation responds. And there's just a little bit of room for lending rates to start coming down end of this year, if not early next year. So there is a little bit of good news that is dependent on, on inflation developments from one month to the next. So we'll just have to see if the favorable outlook at, from this point onwards, if it actually does materialize. All right, Christy, before I let you go, this is a conversation where we're talking about the numbers, the data, the Reserve Bank, the uh, government policies and all that. But for South Africans, at the end of the day, it's about how much money they have in their pockets. And we've seen that food prices were elevated in 2022 because of the war in Ukraine and a third year of La Nina weather patterns. Food inflation took a toll on household budgets as well. Fuel prices were an issue as well. And of course, some of the political instability, uh, the strikes that South Africa also had to weather in 2022. So so I'll end this by asking you, in terms of the South African consumer and households, what's on the horizon for them for this year? I think the outlook for food inflation specifically is better. It doesn't mean food prices are coming down. They're probably just going to be increasing more slowly than they have. Because as you mentioned last year, weather effects, we had some domestic flooding that disrupted transport and ports and harbor services. Uh, the global supply chain situation, global commodity prices, when you add all of those together, fuel, food prices increased quite significantly. And I think that momentum has slowed down. So there's a little bit of good news there. And I think if we look at the latest consumer confidence data, there's also a little bit of an improvement in sentiment amongst consumers. And I think people are starting to realize that the, the shock that we had sort of the second and third quarter of last year, the worst of that is probably over. So there's a little bit more good news, I think, to carry into the new year from a consumer side. All right, so we'll leave it at that for now. Christy Felgin, thank you as always, and we look forward to talking to you several times in 2023 and having these conversations that go beyond just the numbers. Thank you so much today. Thank you. And we've spoken about two of the continent's largest economies today. Nigeria, the largest economy, is working to diversify. And South Africa, the continent's most industrialized economy, is trying to get back on the right path. The economic fortunes of these two African giants, as well as Egypt, will have a large influence on the economic performance of the continent in 2023.